we have a little story this morning, and no guesses as to what story, all right? You don't get 10 points for knowing that we're going to go to the, the, the Christmas story today. Uh, that doesn't mean you have a prophetic gift at all. Um, but if you have a Bible today, I would love for you to open up to the book that is entitled Matthew. Uh, and for those of you who are not regularly around church, this is a, this is a, the, the story uh, of Jesus' life on earth as recounted uh, by his disciples, uh, one in particular, this one, Matthew. Um, and he's writing to all of the Jews back in the, the first, second century time, uh, telling them, reminding them about the life of Jesus. Uh, and so we're going to read from a little bit near the beginning, Matthew chapter 2. And uh, I'm going to read from verse 9. I'm going to read a couple of verses. If you don't have a Bible, it will be on the screen behind you. If you're watching online, it will come up on your screen for you. How good is that? Love our tech team. Uh, however, for all of you next week, you will all be online at some point, right? Because Christmas at home is going to be amazing. Um, I preach for eight minutes. That's it. That's it. That's all you get. Eight minutes. The rest is carols and a little bit from my wife, which uh, is probably the best bit. Uh, but Christmas at home is, is purposefully put together for you to watch with your family. It is a beautiful celebration of the story of Christmas. The carols are amazing. I don't want to give too much away. You've seen some, some little, little snapshots, but there's kids, there's animals. It's fun. Uh, and there's a beautiful, like, very small little Christmas message. I would love for you to invite your family, whoever you're having Christmas with, over the whole Christmas weekend, just to sit. And well, the whole thing goes for, uh, I think, just 30 minutes. That's it. Um, and and, and it's, it's a really easy watch. So do that next week. And hopefully by now you've found Matthew chapter 2. Here we go. It says, after this interview, the wise men went their way. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. You know, God, if God is trying to get you somewhere in life, he will ensure that he goes before you and directs you. Yeah. Right? The star was not easily missed by the wise men. Might have been missed by a whole lot of people because God's not trying to give the same message to every person about where they're trying to get to. He's trying to speak to you. And he's going to speak in a way that works for you. The wise men also in other translations are called astrologers, right? They looked at the stars. This was their thing. We need to get a confidence that God is going to speak to us through our thing. Whatever that is for you, he's not going to speak to you. He's not going to direct you. He's not going to guide you in a way that doesn't work for you. Okay, you don't need to worry that you're going to miss it. Oh God, what if I miss what you're saying? He's going to put a big star in the sky if you're an astrologer. Okay, if you're into other things, he's going he's to speak to you through that. It says, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of, where are my kids this morning? Where are, where are our young people? What gifts did the wise men bring? Can we remember as the three you got to yell it out real loud. What was it? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Fantastic. <laughs> Victory Kids doing an amazing job. And, um, you know, we're thousands of years down the track, and most of us only really know what gold is. Uh, I, think, I think, you know, if, if, if you're rocking some frankincense, now is the time to put it in the essential oil dispenser. It's the, it's the season for frankincense. But no one really knows what myrrh is, right? Like, I don't know, maybe you do, but gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Apparently, they were really amazing gifts at that point in time. Uh, if you're looking to give someone a gift this Christmas, I would steer away from the frankincense and myrrh. I'm just saying, it doesn't, contextually, historically, they were amazing. These days, I don't know if they carry the same weight. Um, but gold, you know, you can always go with gold. Have you... Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Have you ever received a gift that you wouldn't label a gift? Have you ever had that experience? Someone packages something up for you, they give it to you, they think it's a gift, but you're like, a, 
Uh, I don't really feel like this is a gift. Can I give you an example? Once, I can't remember if it was birthday or Christmas, uh, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to get my wife an amazing gift. Now, I think I might have told this story once before, but uh, we have lots of visitors today, so I feel like I can, I can, I can do a repeat. And I was like, you know what she's going to love? She's going to love a cordless vacuum. <laughs> that, that, now some of you who know my wife might know where this story is going, but... But I'm like, I'm going to get her the best cordless vacuum. And this is not an advertisement, but if they would like to sponsor our, 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 our tech, uh, Dyson, happy to do that. Um, but I went and I bought this amazing Dyson cordless vacuum cleaner, right? Look, it was amazing. I wrapped it up. And I'm a, I'm a rapper, right? Like, not, not like a singer, but I, I embrace the wrapping. There's a part of my personality that really appreciates, like, really fine stuff folded edge lines, right, and, and like no scrappy corners, but like the, the ones that fold in and then that fold up and fold up, and you get that perfect like tick, the wrapping looks, so, so I'm wrapping it, I would have done ribbons and all the expensive, extravagant, really unnecessary additions to the wrapping, right, some of you, some of you aren't into that, but that's okay, um, and so I wrapped it up, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know when you're super proud of, like, the, the present that you're about to give? You're like, this one is going to land the plane. This is like, come on. And so uh, I can't remember, again, birthday or Christmas. Anyway, I'm, like, saving the best to last. So I've given her, like, the, the, the one free massage from your husband voucher, which is really a, a gift for me, right? You know that. Um, but then last of all, here we go, the big box, right? The big box comes out and I give it to her. And this is the gift. And, and for some of you this morning, you're going to be like, I would not label that gift a gift. That is not translating to me at all. If you gave me a vacuum, you're looking at your husband right now. If you give me a vacuum, you are taking that back to the store on Boxing Day. You're swapping that for a store credit and I'm going shopping, right? That's, that's what's happening. That's the real gift. The, uh, I've worked out, side note, I've worked out with my wife that, I have a huge amount of freedom to go to any, like, a, 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 like a small range of clothing stores and go freelance, right? I can just try. I can just try because the worst thing that could happen is she ends up with a credit voucher at that store anyway. And that in itself is a gift, right? So, so her birthday just happened. I'm like, I went out in the box, babe. I'm like, I bought you all sorts of things and she's already returned one. And that was great. I was like, the best part of her day was getting to return it and then spend that credit on whatever she wanted. Anyway, gave her this vacuum, and it uh, just so happens my wife loves cleaning. So that vacuum was a great gift for her, but, but maybe that vacuum would not be a gift for you, and you would not label that gift a gift. I often wonder about Jesus. I have three kids. They have all been two years of age. In this particular story, Jesus is about two years of age at this point. Okay, it's a little bit on from, from, from the stable, okay? Even though this morning we're going to bring a manger out, it's, it's, it's a little bit on from the stable, uh, the initial birth. Um, and I don't know any two-year-olds that are labeling gold, frankincense, and myrrh a gift. Like if I wrapped up a little bit of myrrh, gave it to Oakley, I'm, I'm not sure he would know what to do with it. I'm not sure it's going to translate like Duplo would, Right? Not that you're not getting any Duplo for Christmas, but yeah, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. So husbands, it's not too late. If you have a gift that you're unsure, if your wife is going to call it a gift, you still have a week. Go and exchange it. Go and exchange it. But you know, this story this morning, it presents for us a question, really. And that question is, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? You see, because our answer to that will determine our response. You see, the wise men had an answer. The wise men, their answer, if you read around that little passage I read, the context of the story, they travel into uh, the, 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 the area, they go to the current king, King Herod. They're like, yo, where's the new king? And Herod's a bit like, I'm sorry? There's a new king, I'm the king. Uh, and there's a whole ramifications to that. But, but they, they clearly knew who they were looking for. And when they got there, it says they worshipped. Who they believed Jesus to be determined how they responded to Jesus. So who is Jesus to you? When we read the Bible, there is 
there is only three answers that we can come to. And you know, you can explore these three answers. They're fairly common. They've been written about over the the eons of history, right? But Jesus is either a pathological liar. He is either an absolute lunatic or he is who he claims to be and he is God, whether we understand what that means or not. He is either a liar, a lunatic, or he is Lord. And we may not understand what Lord means, but that doesn't, that doesn't diminish the fact that that is who he is. He is either not to be believed because he's either a liar or a lunatic, or he is first to be believed, and second, we try to understand because he is Lord. And how we answer that question will determine how we respond to him. Because if he's a liar or a lunatic, then we should, with all wisdom in this world, absolutely disregard every concept, everything that he has said, everything that he explains about life and love and everything, because it is absolute rubbish. But if he is Lord, then that changes things. Even if we don't understand fully what that might change, it changes things. You see, because the wise men believed that he was king, they traveled. They traveled a long way. No one travels a long way for a liar, a lunatic. But when you believe he's Lord, they traveled a long way. They bought gold. They bought frankincense and myrrh. Right? They did all of these things because of how they answered that question. A king has been born. Come and see, travel, follow, inquire, seek, bring gifts, and worship. These are responses based on how we answer that question. If he is not Lord, then do not seek after him. Do not seek his wisdom. Do not seek his understanding. If he is a lunatic, do not worship him. But if he is Lord, if Jesus is the King of Kings, if Jesus is who he claims to be and who his disciples said he was, if that is the truth and if we believe that, then there is a different set of responses that we are called to adhere to. You see... If he is king, then there is a a reasonable response. In fact, in in Romans, a book written by Paul, someone who who used to not believe who Jesus was and then had a radical moment in his life where, where he would say he met Jesus for real. After this, he, re- he writes this to, to the, the, the believers that were in the city of Rome. He writes in chapter 12, verse 1, and, and I'm, I'm reading out of the New King James translation, which everyone's stoked about, but it says this. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, love that language, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, or Or this is your reasonable response. This is how you should respond if Jesus is king. If he's Lord, this is how. And so I I thought this morning we could get some some of our young people, our kids up this morning. I know that my son in particular is is super ready for this moment in the service. There he is. So uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Darren to come up. Uh, He's going to help out. Um, And uh, I thought, you know, that's a very strange scripture. Give your bodies as a living sacrifice. What is that? I mean, the wise men got to bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We're told to bring a living sacrifice. So I thought, you know what? Well, maybe our kids can help us with what that might look like. So I need, I need 12 kids. 12, which is why I needed a helper. 12 kids, all right? 12 kids. And look, I'm not trying to create chaos, but you get chocolate. There's chocolate involved, and I need, I need my manger. Where's my manger? Here we go, here we go. I definitely created chaos. All right, all right, you need, you get one of these each. All right, you need this one. Hang on, here's your chocolate. Don't unwrap it, don't unwrap it. Okay, 
Here, I'll hold this. Pastor Darren's going to help you unwrap. Hold this. Pastor Darren's going to help you unwrap. I need you guys to, to stand around the manger. Stand around the manger. Here we go. This is called Bribery 101 Parenting Seminar right now. Chocolate equals behavior. There we go. 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 All right, so here we go. Our, our young people are going to, they're going to hold up some signs for us that are going to give us some examples of what it looks like to be a living sacrifice. Who's missing a chocolate? One fell off. There you go. Oh, Pastor Darren's going to help you. You go and see him. He'll help you. He'll help you unwrap it. All right, so what do we got? What do we got? Here we go. We can give our thanks. We can give our thanks. That's how we respond. If Jesus is Lord, then a reasonable response is our thanks. We can give our voice. We can give our worship. We can give our energy. We can give our money. That's close to gold, right? It's one of the ones we translate with. That's gold. We can give our... Oh, 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 let's, let's, let's go with this one. That's a much better one. That's a much better one. Come over this way. Do you want to stand over here? Did you drop your chocolate? Is this yours? That's your wrapper. Oh, we can give our time. That is a great example of a reasonable response. We can give our gifts. We can give our, our life. We can give our best. We can give our praise. We can give our passion. So we may not have frankincense and myrrh unless you signed up to doTERRA, and then you might. But, but we've all got these things. So, some of us have more life than others, but we've all got these things. Some of us have more energy than others, right? But, but this is a reasonable response. When the wise men came, it's because they thought and believed that Jesus was king. And therefore, they bought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. My question to you is, how do you answer that question? And so then what are you going to bring? Are you guys all right to stand up here for another five minutes? Can you do that? I don't have a second chocolate, so I'm, ba I'm banking on the first one. I'm banking on the first one. But sometimes what we call reasonable, others call unreasonable because they don't believe what we believe. And maybe you're here this morning and you're like, wow, you, you do this every week? That is unreasonable. You give 10% of your income into the church and you don't, like you just, that's unreasonable. You rock up at quarter to seven to set up, that's unreasonable. No, no, no. For those of us that believe, that is, that is a willing, reasonable response to our King. You give your time, you give your passion, I mean, Pastor Nate, aren't you exhausted on a Sunday afternoon? Absolutely, you better believe KFC and a nap is happening. But I love, I love it. Giving my passion and my energy is, is like barely getting to a reasonable response. The woman in the Bible that cracked open the alabaster box and poured it, poured it out to Jesus. And even his disciples were like, oh, that's a little unreasonable You know, there's other things that we get to bring to Jesus. And these are these things that, that we might not label a gift. Remember how we started with the story about a gift that we might not label a gift? Well, these are the things that, that if you've been in church any period of time, you would be like, oh yeah, I've heard that. Oh yeah, that, I would call that. If, if that was a gift, I'd call that a gift. But what about the things that Jesus encourages us to bring to him that, that maybe we don't label a gift, but he still says, actually, when you bring that to me, it's like you're bringing me a gift because you're bringing me you. You're bringing me the real you. Don't, don't bring me something that's pretense. Don't bring me something that's should. But we do that because we don't believe that what we really would bring is actually a gift. We don't label it a gift, and so we keep it and we don't give it. And so, you know, one of my favorite carols is the little drummer boy. 
right? I love it because the whole context is like the three wise men story and it's kind of like, well, he doesn't have gold, frankincense and myrrh. All he has is a drum. And he's realized that if he just brings himself, that's a great gift. And Jesus loves that gift. When we just bring ourselves, we don't have to try to be anything. We don't have to try to bring what we think we should. I mean, these are good, but who knows there's times in life where we don't necessarily have these to bring. So, so you know, on the back of these, there's some different gifts that I want to encourage you this Christmas. You can bring these other gifts to Jesus just as much because they're you and they're what's real in you. So, so kids, can we turn our signs around? Can we turn? There we go. So what about the offense that we carry or the pain that we have? What about our mistakes? What about our, our issues with church? If we can't bring them to Jesus, where can we bring them? Our fears, our disappointments, our hurts, our emotional depletion. Any other parent of three small kids at that point right now in the Christmas journey, you're like, God, I got nothing left, right? Our anxieties, our tiredness, our prejudices, our worries. These are the things that we don't label a gift, but God says, I'm going to turn your mourning into dancing. I'm going to give you beauty for ashes. But what we do is we hold the ashes because we don't call ashes a gift. But Jesus calls it a gift because he's like, come and give it to me because I want to give you new for old. I want to transform you. So I want, You give me your pain, I'm going to give you joy. You give me your hurt, I'm going to give you healing. You give me your issues, I'm going to show you transformation. But the problem is we don't label these as gifts and so we hold them and we don't give them to Jesus. And my encouragement for you in this Christmas season is that you can bring whatever you have to Jesus. Can we stand right across this place? I want to pray for you if that's all right. Maybe that's something that you might not be used to. Online, I want to pray for you because I have a sneaking suspicion that although the first side of these signs looked really great, like that's what it should look like, the truth is that most of us come into the end of the year carrying some form of the second sign. And if we aren't a church that encourages each other to bring our real stuff to Jesus, then I think we're missing what the community of believers is meant to be about. So why don't you close your eyes? I want to pray. Father, right now, right across this place, every single person here, every single person online, I pray that they would know that whatever it is they're carrying right now, that your promise is that your yoke is easy, that your burden is light, that we are supposed to hand over our difficulty for your strength, our weakness for you to lift us up, Father. So Lord, I pray, help each of us to feel and to know that we can bring the real us to you this Christmas and you still see it as a gift. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, kids, what I would like you to do is I would like you to put those signs into the manger because we're giving that stuff to Jesus. We're giving that stuff to Jesus, and we're going to leave them there because we don't need to pick them up again. And then you guys can head down. Can we give our kids an amazing round of applause for helping out this morning? And maybe, maybe just if you, if you take one visual image away from the service this morning, maybe don't let it be a Christmas tree or Joel's amazing face. Why don't, why don't you let it be this, where all of those things are left?